Hello everyone and welcome back. From this session onwards, we are going to begin the series Evolution of Computers. And today we are in the part 1. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover today. At first, we will understand the significance of logic gates. Thereafter, we will study about the evolution of computers briefly. Now, the computers that we see nowadays, it's a result of an evolution. Therefore, the development had to go through quite a few eras. And from those eras, we are going to cover in this session the mechanical era. So, let's begin with the significance of logic gates. Now, in the very first session of this course, we identified all the various components of a modern desktop computer, didn't we? There, we also learned that the microprocessor, which was previously known as central processing unit, resides at the heart of the computer system. As the discussion progressed, we learned that the microprocessors, which are also known as MUP, internally it is subdivided into various sections. And also, we briefly understood the purpose of these various sections. Today, let's take that discussion a bit more further. Let's talk about the functionalities and the circuits which are needed to build these various blocks. Now, I would like to begin with the ALU, that is the arithmetic and logic unit. Basically, the ALU performs arithmetic and logical operations on the data. Therefore, it includes the circuits for addition, subtraction. Coming to the logical functionalities, it should also provide circuits so that we can perform AND, OR, exclusive OR. And if we talk about some more complex circuits, it should also give us the functionality for comparison and so on. So, clearly, a bunch of combinational circuits. Now, if we shift our focus to the register section, this is nothing but the sequential circuits made by flip-flops and latches. Now, apart from this, if we talk about the remaining components of the microprocessor, it is going to have combinational circuits like the decoder. Now, coming to the instruction decoder, it takes a binary machine language instruction and decode it to generate the necessary control signals for the microprocessor's internal operations. Then it should also have multiplexure. Multiplexures are used to select one of several input data sources based on the control signals generated by the control units. And in specifically 8085, multiplexures are used in the data and address buses. Another significant combinational circuit would be demultiplexure. Now, demultiplexures are used to route a single input to one of the several possible outputs based on the control signals. And in most of the microprocessors, these are used for address decoding. Next up, we can also talk about the priority encoder. Now, priority encoder is used in interrupt processing to determine the highest priority interrupt among multiple interrupt requests. So, this is another circuit which is essential for a microprocessor to have. Apart from this, we can also talk about the control logic. Now, the control logic specifically falls under the section Timing and Control Unit. Using the control logic, the control unit generates various control signals to coordinate the operation of different sections of the microprocessor. So, these are the different circuits which actually help us build the microprocessor chip. Now, if you think about it, all these are basically built using the logic gates. And this is the reason why logic gates are called the basic building blocks of digital computers. So, that was the significance of logic gates. We learnt about this because this is going to be a very important part in our further discussions in this series. Let's now get into the evolution of computers. Now, as I told you earlier, the computers that we see nowadays are the modern day computers. And most importantly, they haven't been built over a night. The development process went through an evolution. Nowadays, the computers that we see and use are digital computers. However, the foundational concept of computers began from early 1600s. 
and during that time period electrical engineering was yet to surface so the implementation of computers began mechanically looking back in that time we call it the mechanical era now i just mentioned the foundational concepts begin from early 1600s however in 1623 the first mechanical calculator was invented so that year has been marked as the milestone of the origin of the mechanical era and it lasted till the early 1940s now by this time electrical components began to surface so the first generation of electronic computers began it started from early 1940s and it lasted till 1950s next up we have got the second generation during this time period that is from 1950s to 1960s The advent of transistors was a big milestone which replaced the vacuum tubes which were used in the first generation. Then comes the third generation with the advent of integrated circuits and the time period of that was 1960s till early 1970s. And thereafter we have got the fourth generation that is early 1970s to present day. Remember This is the generation where in 1971 the first microprocessor was invented. So, the modern day computers that we use, it had to go through all these generations, basically a few centuries to get what we are having today. So, that was the brief introduction to the evolution of computers. Let's now get into the mechanical era. Now when we talk about the mechanical era remember this is the time the electricity wasn't even invented Benjamin Franklin was yet to conduct his research Now in this session only we learned that the basic building blocks of computers are the logic gates So even in the mechanical era if we could build the logic gates we could have created the computers right and that was the basics of it Let me show you the basic gates that is AND, OR and NOT whether they can be built and implemented using mechanical parts. So this is an AND gates example. As you can see this is completely built out of mechanical parts. Now in this mechanical circuit if you notice carefully these two are the inputs and this is the place where the output will be coming out from. Now we already know the logic for AND gate. if both the inputs are high then only the output will come out and in order to implement that logic we need to focus on this part of the circuit now the circuit is built very beautifully so that it can demonstrate the ans logic let me explain how this will work so if we push this switch therefore this section will move in and notice in this block we have placed a pivot in between and since the pressure is only being applied to this portion and at the same time since this block is constructed at this side in such a way that putting pressure on this side due to the presence of this pivot will retract the hook side of this block so no pressure will be given to this tube and hence no outcome now what is going to happen if we only provide pressure on this switch well look at this structure this portion is not linked to this block so it will just push forward however if we provide pressure on both the switches in that case this will push forward and since this lever is also being pushed the position of this bolt will hold this retraction so eventually we will have the output and that's the logic of and right when both the switches are on the output will be on so this is how mechanically and get can be implemented let's now see whether we can implement or get well this is the circuit which is built mechanically and in this circuit this portion is the important part now before i explain the working principle of this circuit i hope you remember what is the functionality of or well if no inputs are there no output will be generated 
However, if one of the inputs is high or if both of them are high, the output will be there. And that is achieved with this portion of the circuit. Observe, this block is connected to both the switches. So if we press this switch, this entire block is going to push this tube and the output is going to be generated. And the same can be stated for this switch as well. Additionally, if we press both the switches, the same result will be there. So this is how mechanically OR gate can be implemented. Now we already have observed AND and OR. Can we implement NOT as well? Well, yes we can. This is a basic mechanical circuit for the implementation of the NOT gate. Let me explain how this is going to work. Notice, in between we have got a cog wheel and this is the heart of this particular mechanical circuit. Now, this will be our input end and this is our output end. Now, if we put no pressure, that if the input is zero, the output is high. Now, let me show you if we press the switch, what will happen in that case? Well, pushing this will move these spikes ahead. Due to that, this cog wheel will start rotating. And while it is rotating, it will retract this series of spikes, inverting the output. Basically, when input is high, the output is zero. And when the input is zero, output is high. In other words, the functionality of a NOT gate. So, clearly, mechanically, the logic gates can be built. Then why not the computers? Let's get into the mechanical era, which started its milestone from 1623 and lasted till 1940s. Now, I told you earlier, the foundational concepts of computers started at early 1600s. However, in 1623, with the invention of Wilhelm Schickard's calculating clock, which is considered to be the earliest mechanical calculator, it marks the origin of the computers in 1623. Later in this timeline, during 1642, Blaise Pascal invented his Pascaline. And this was in true sense a mechanical calculator. Eventually, during 1671, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz devised his tape recorder. Now, this machine was another mechanical calculator. However, it was capable of performing multiplication and division. Now, after the 1600s, the next big milestone in the mechanical era of computers began from 1820s till 1830s, when Charles Babbage devised his difference engine. Now, difference engine was an automatic mechanical calculator designed to tabulate polynomial functions. Later, Charles Babbage modified his idea and proposed analytical engine, for which, in 1843, Lady Ada Lovelace wrote the first algorithm. Remember, analytical engine is considered as one of the first designed for general purpose mechanical computers. So, these are the various milestones of mechanical era. So, in this session, we covered the significance of logic gates. We were briefly introduced to the evolution of computers and from that, we covered mechanical era as well. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to cover the remaining eras. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.